What a summer this is turning into in the head coach. More jeopardy, more job news on the way. We have no new contract with four weeks to go. There's job interviews on the horizon. And we've got to find a way out because in four weeks, we're going to be unemployed. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 25 of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We're not bringing up the quarter of a century in style though, because with 27 days to go on our Peterborough Sports contract, we are yet to be offered a new deal. We met the objectives going from 6 points from safety to 10 points clear and safe at the end of the year. But the board weren't happy enough with that. They don't consider that avoiding a relegation battle. And as a result today, we are continuing the hunt for a new job. We've applied for eight or nine since the season ended. And today, we're not back with one interview. We're not back with two. We're not even back with three. We have got four interview offers. And that is a real promising sign for me. The fact that others think we've done a good job. One of the media links when we'd applied for a job actually said, that we'd done good work at Peterborough Sports, and that in itself was justification. So if you're looking forward to seeing who they are and whether we get any job offers before the end of this episode, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. We've got four weeks to avoid becoming officially unemployed, and we've got man flu, but that's not going to stop us going to the interviews. So hopefully the boards will forgive us for that, and one of them will give us a chance to continue our career, because this club is in a mess. 500 grand in debt, Peterborough Sports, I don't know what they think they can get and I'm going to keep an eye on them next year because I think they might be in trouble. Having said that, we are massively going to miss Carl Hudlin. We're also massively going to miss Russ Wilcox who has shown us that the AI director of football can be good in FM23. So hopefully if the new club doesn't have one, they'll go and employ him as he's got a good relationship with us now. But let's go and get through to the inbox. You want to see what clubs they are, don't you? Let's start with the job centre because... We have applied for loads of jobs over the summer period so far. You can see at the moment, there's about nine or ten we're in the running for. We've gone from a relegated League Two club, some National League North and South, and a National League relegation team. We've had some media rumours linking us potentially with Linfield, a return to Northern Ireland, that would be interesting in this save. And then of course, Scottish League One and Two, and Sweden, where we've had some interest as well. But for now, we've got four job interview offers. We've also had a few clubs reject us already. Let's go and run through the list because there are some attractive names here and some attractive propositions because look, Chorley, who we finished, well, just below after the final day of the season. Oldham, a massive club that have found themselves down in the National League North. They were actually in one of my FM23 top threes as a team to manage this year. They've come down again and we've seen they're in financial mess. So that might be a more similar type of role to this one. But I'm a little bit worried they want us to lead them to promotion when they've got no money. There's also Hampton and Richmond who are coming down from a surprise promotion to the National League. Sound familiar? Yes, that's what happened to Peterborough Sports. And then Maidenhead. This one's interesting for me. But there is one little caveat. They have got a slight reluctance at us meeting their club vision. Mainly because of my reluctance towards making set pieces an important part of our approach. What tells you that they haven't watched any of our games this season? It is the only way we got out of trouble here with Peterborough Sports. I have no idea why they're saying that. But I've got to be honest, of the four on paper, Oldham is obviously the biggest club. That is one that stands out. Maidenhead, being the only ones in the National League South and have got the best squad on paper, which obviously I've done my research, I'm preparing for the interviews, Maidenhead have got some cracking names. They've got three players tied down for next year who are all excellent for the level. And there's one player that's not been offered a contract yet. Can you see who it is? Cole Kopecker is here. For those that weren't here in FM22, Hemel Hempstead Town legend for us. I saw him score live in the flesh as well. He's a great player. And I'd love to be managing him again, even if it's only for a couple of weeks. So they're the two that I'd really like to get. Chorley, of course, a bit of a struggling club. They're in a similar position to us. They've got loads of players who want to leave or who are going to leave. And a few players they've got tied down are uh, not hugely great and on some big wages. In terms of Hampton and Richmond, they're a little bit different. They're coming down from the National League. They've got some players on bigger money, a few again wanting to leave. But they're not the best side. They're probably not even as good 
as the Peterborough Sports First Eleven. So it's a little bit of a tricky one, but there's only two jobs I want. So I'm going to show you those two interviews. I don't want to bore you to death with the same questions over and over. We'll get through those two. We'll keep progressing through the summer and we'll see if one of our two first choices offer us a job. Because if those two go, it's a no-brainer. If it's the other two, we maybe have a decision to make. Let's start with Maidenhead. So, Charlie Pearson, the man hosting our interview, thank you for coming along. We are glad you've come to discuss our plans and club vision should we decide to hire you. You're not as glad as me to have the chance of getting out of here. Please be the first club that I actually like working for. It's great to be here. Let's get started. Some people might be concerned at your lack of experience in this country. We're still going to get that after only being here half a year. I'm just going to ask for a chance. I admit I don't have much, but I need it. I need someone to give me it. Why are you thinking of making what some people would describe as a sideways move? Well, if you look at the two squads on paper, it's not. I tell you what, give me your job. Get me Kyle Hudlin and Russ Wilcox. I won't say a word. I'll take you into the playoffs. I am keen to make my way up the managerial ladder. I think this is an opportunity. What I want to tell them is I think this is a bigger club and I'm going to take you further and hopefully that will do it. Why have you felt it acceptable to apply for a number of jobs whilst employed by another team? I won't do it again. If you hire me and you're good to me, I won't do it. I'll wait for the job offer to come. Can you explain why you appear to be in the running for a few jobs right now? Just want to keep progressing. Not going to withdraw from the others because Oldham's a big one for me. Now, this is something that's cropping up a lot, isn't it? We had it when we came to Peterborough Sports and in that round of interviews before it as well. You've previously been embroiled in media controversies. Your inability to cultivate a strong dressing room atmosphere. No, it's something I've learned from. We'll be fine. Are you able to ease our worries about losing the backing of your players? How many times do you want to ask it? There will be no problems with the dressing room. We want to ensure the dressing room atmosphere is much better than under our previous manager. I mean, you've, you've got six, seven questions and you've asked me the same one three times. That's a slight concern. We'll keep an eye on that pattern with the olden one. I promise to secure a positive and strong dressing room atmosphere. You're potentially replacing someone who did not enjoy a good relationship with the fans I always try to forge a strong bond. They love me. Don't you worry about that. We understand the importance of having the right backroom team. Oh, no, no, no. This is the head coach. You decide that for me. Let's have a look at the club vision. That is the main thing. Develop players using the club's youth system. I hope it's better than Peterborough Sports. Uh, make the most of set pieces. Keep me Cole Capequa. I'll keep your goals. And then moving further down, challenge for a National League South playoff place. Bigger ambitions already. They think they should be competing for promotion. Grow the club's reputation. Continue to challenge for a playoff place. Yes, this is a step up. This isn't a step sideways at all. I agree. It's exciting. It's ambitious. We've got no objectives because it's the start of June. I've got no request to propose. Let's get going. I want the job at Maidenhead. That is a good start. And there's media reports straight after it. What does it say? Few bookmakers had us as anything other than an outsider. Uh, the opportunity to meet face to face is not believed to have had a significant impact. That sentence contradicts itself. It says it's not believed to have had a significant impact, but the Magpie is believed to be increasingly impressed with his credentials. So either it hasn't had an impact or they're becoming increasingly impressed and it has. I mean, which one is it? You've got to make your mind up, but we'll wait and see if we get that. Let's go and talk to Oldham as well. That's the other one I was looking at. And this is a big club. Very different in the sense that they're in a financial mess. They're expecting to get promoted on a shoestring budget and there's a lot of rot behind the scenes. But the thing we've got to think of from a personal point of view, one and a half star reputation. It's a bigger club. It's a club that still did well last year. It has some good players, but some of their players are on like one and a half grand a week. It's scandalous, really. So the board are pleased we've taken time to attend. Lewis Donnelly, I'm glad you've given me a chance to talk. Some people might be concerned at your lack of experience. Same question. Uh, can you offer us assurances that you have what it takes to make the jump to managing a club as big as ours? So it's definitely being judged on a star reputation. Uh, I think my body of work proves I deserve the opportunity. I've just turned Peterborough Sports around. Not that they've noticed it. Why have you felt it acceptable to apply for a number of jobs? Um, I admit I lack professionalism. I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm sorry. Um, I want to keep progressing. Oh, not the dressing room atmosphere again. Yep, we've had it multiple times here as well. Media controversies. Our previous manager didn't get on well with the fans. 
I've always had a good relationship with the fans. Are you comfortable managing a team in considerable financial trouble? I've never done anything else, Lewis. That's all I've ever done in my career. I'm well versed in these situations. We understand the importance of the right backroom team. I don't need it. What do you want to achieve? Maximum one year contract for over 33s. Of course, the big difference with Oldham, they're going to be a professional club. That's the main thing compared to Maidenhead, who I think is still semi-pro. Uh, work towards repairing financial damage. So that's going to be bad. Their objective in two years is to attempt to remain in the National League. So they definitely want to get promoted next year. Not that it says it there. But that is big pressure for a side that's finished eighth, that's going to cut its wage bill and is hemorrhaging money. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. But we'll see which one we get offered. I think Pete Wilde was the favourite for Oldham. So I'd suggest we've got less of a chance at that. Uh, do you have anything to say about your recent interview opportunities? Not at all. Uh, let's have a look. Maidenhead are semi-pro. So I can understand why we're a bigger favourite for that one. But if you look at it on paper, in terms of comfort, in terms of financial situation and squad depth, Maidenhead probably is the better job. Oldham just has the big club reputation. Ultimately, I don't care which one I get. I will attend the other two interviews anyway. And we'll be back in a minute. See if we've got a job. Hopefully, one of them gives us the chance. Well, we are back three days later and someone really wants us. We've got one of the two jobs that we went for and wanted have offered us the role. The other one, the favourite for the job, has become much shorter odds. Is it the one you're expecting, though? Is it the one we expected? Let's go to the inbox. Yes, it is. Maidenhead have approached us. 10 grand transfer budget, 8 grand a week wage budget, which is over double what we've got next season for Peterborough Sports. I should say, incidentally, that Peterborough Sports have offered two players contracts already and not been able to get them over wage and appearance fee. So we are in a position where it gets quite tricky. What I am concerned about, though, is that the board for Maidenhead have changed their objectives from the interview. They said they want a challenge for a playoff place. Now they're saying they've got to reach it. So a little bit topsy-turvy there. I'm not a big fan of his moustache either, I've got to be honest. But... We'll live with that for now. We have made the promises to make no club job applications and to garner a good dressing room atmosphere. But overall, this is not a job I can turn down. Peterborough Sports are a mess. They're losing money galore. They're cutting their wage bill by £1,200 next season. And if we go and have a look at the squad itself at the minute here, I mean, there's basically no one tied down. They've got youth players, four or five senior pros tied down, and then the rest of them are all going to be off. So I definitely know which one's a better position. And let's be fair, I'm talking about that like Peterborough Sports might offer us a contract. At the moment, we are three and a half weeks from being out of work. I cannot turn down a job that's on the same money, closer to home, and a real opportunity with a good club. So let's go and start the negotiations. This could be the move for us. Let's go and try and get it up to 625. So my current deal is 600 and it would be nice just to think, oh, I've actually gone up and increased my wage as well. So I suggest that they've accepted it. A pay rise closer to home, National League South, less travel for me and a brilliant club that doesn't seem to be in as much of a financial mess. Let's finalise the deal because today's episode will finish with us in charge of Maidenhead. And here it is. Maidenhead United hire us. It's a heated debate again. Did the club favour us all along because Keith Curl is suggested by the media to have been that. They mentioned a the narrow diamond, but I'm open to changing as we know. They finished in the top half last year. They've got some good players tied down. Will they give Cole Capecra a new deal? That's the big question. Of course, we don't know if they've got a director of football, whether the assistant manager is still there. We'll have a look at that. And it does say that we've left Peterborough Sports to join divisional rivals Maidenhead. But one's in the north, one's in the south in terms of division. So... I'm not quite sure that's right either, but let's go and get through to the next screen, see what we've got to work with. Media prediction was third this year, so I did tell you they had some decent players on paper, and it seems that that is reflected in-game. One-star reputation, fierce rivals Marlow. Of course, they start in the National League in real life. We've got an assistant manager in Ryan Peters. We'll meet him in a minute. Wage and transfer budget bigger than we had. They've got their own ground with a 4,500 capacity. They got relegated in the first season, of course, or the second season, in fact. So this is only going to be their second year in the National League South. Poor training facilities, below average youth. That's not bad for this level. And fairly basic youth recruitment too. Let's get through to the next screen. What have we got here? 
A narrow diamond is suggested there, but that's probably because of us. We'll look at the players in a moment. And then next up, we have got a contract till the end of next season. In fact, the reach to playoffs was the year after. So next season, there isn't actually an expectation in yet. We'll discuss that as we go in. But for now, developing players through the youth system and making the most to set pieces, I'm fairly happy to do both of those things. Let's go and have a look at what they expect. Supporters want to reach the playoffs this year. Get the better of Marlow if we play against them and finish above Slough in the league, which I think we can do. Let's get through to our first day in the job and meet the players that are definitely here for next season. So, of course, we're going to task our chairman with finding a director of football. Will they go back to Russ Wilcox? I really hope so. Just don't go to Chris Casper or the guy from Airbus. That's all I'm asking. What we are going to look at, though, are the people that are tied down here for next year, both staff and in terms of players as well. Let's start with the staffing. So, Everyone here by the head physio is either on a constant month to month or has got a deal for next season. So we are going to be assisted by Ryan Peters, 400 quid a week assistant manager. He's all right. He's not great working with young players, but it looks like he was a player who's progressed through coaching and assistant management too. No real tactical knowledge. I'm not a big fan of his, but he's all right. I'd rather him be a coach than my assistant, but no complaints. Let's move on to the next one, which is... Goalkeeping coach Liam Vaughan, 40 years of age, is god-awful. Five for the technical attributes that matter. Aaron O'Brien, coach and head of youth development. Better working with youngsters. The rest is appalling. This is not a good coaching team so far. I think we've found the problem. Bangura is the physio who's out at the end of the year. He is not very good anyway. Uh, we've got a chief scout in Lee Devonshire. I guess he's related to Alan, who was the manager long-term at the club. He's actually all right. Judgment of ability and potential is very solid. No problem with him being here. And then down to under 21 manager, Simon Menzin. He's okay. Not the best tactical knowledge, not the best judgment, but an okay coach. Determined, good character, good to have around the place. Under 18 manager is Rico Satchwell. He is great working with youngsters. Not great at much else, but again, a good character to have around. And then the rest of them, youth coaches, we have got Ivan Harper. 18's assistant manager, probably one of the best coaches at the club. Uh, ben Hudel is another coach who, again, is pretty good. Better than the senior ones we've got. And then Megan Robson is the youth physio, who's not great, but no worse than our head physio. So, in terms of the staff, I'm not thrilled with it. The youth staff is actually not bad, but the senior stuff, it isn't great at all. Let's have a quick look at the facilities on the way to the senior squad. It's actually pretty good across the board. The stadium condition's all right, and the youth level's okay as well. For this level, they're a decent side, and they're well run by the looks of it. The crucial question is, are you in the black financially? Because that might get me an extra coaching badge. No, but only just. And if we look at the next month or two with season ticket sales, with pre-season friendlies, etc., I think we can get the club positive there. The committed spending for next year is 2000 which would suggest that they've not got many players tied down. And that is reflected when you look at the squad. Let's very quickly first, though, have a look at the youth teams just to see if there's anyone of note about. Is there someone worth promoting? Not really. Thomas Lawton's got one gold star. I mean, he's OK. Might fill the bench a few times, but not really a first team regular ready. And in under 18s, a decent young striker. One and a half ability, David Oliver. Again, I could see him getting on the bench. Both of those probably would have been regulars at our last club, Peterborough Sports, on the bench. So definitely no complaints. Good to have some decent youth players about. But let's go to the senior team. This is what it's all about. We have got three players on a contract for next year and two players on non-contract terms. The rest, as it stands, are all leaving. So we'll have a look at some. We'll see who we'd like to keep ideally. But I don't think there's going to be many of this squad here. So let's start with the five that we know are going to be here and then we'll just graze over the rest. So if we get them in, reports order, not that our assistant is great at judging. It is three of the better players tied down. And in fact, of the players on permanent contracts, excluding the loanees, it's the best three players. So Nathan Woodhouse is a 23-year-old left back, three and a half ability, four-star potential. He's wanted, he's got a slight concern. Don't worry about that, we'll do well for you. I mean, look at the standard. This is what I talked about when I was doing my research. I obviously knew of Cole Capequa. I know of Kane Ferdinand, who's played for Luton. Professional personality, a brilliant character, a fabulous player. This guy 
would have been the best player at Peterborough Sports. If we could find some quality to go with him, I mean, this is going to be a great side. All we need is a director of football that gets us good players to fill the squad. Because at the moment, people like this are players that can be built around. And even if he ends up going to Crawley, you're talking 30, 40 grand into the club. It's a massive quality player we're talking about here. Through the Crew Academy, which is famous, of course. And let's talk about the next two. Ollie Ewing, you may remember the name. Popped up for TNS for about 10 years in our banger save many years ago. Four star ability, four and a half potential. Again, great personality. This is the difference in this squad. We've got leaders. We've got good characters. Two goals, four assists. Not his best season, but... I really like him. He's a proper box to box. He gets up and down, got quality in both boxes, and he's got a great engine at this level. Proper star player, Welsh under 21. I mean, we can't ask for more than this. If we keep those two and Alfie Lloyd is any good, we've got one hell of a spine to build around because Alfie Lloyd, a three and a half star, 22 year old right winger. Oh, he's not a winger. He is a striker. And look at him. Great finishing, composure, first touch, electric quick. That boy will score goals. And yes, he can play as a winger. But if I can find a front two with him alongside a big man, what a player. Nine goals this season, quite a few assists as well. I like him. I mean, either position he's going to be a star, but what a player to start. Those three are definitely here. The other two that are on non-contract terms are Archie Thomas, two-star midfielder, pretty much par for the course, as good as most of the centre mids we had at Peterborough Sports. Again, determined personality. What was Lloyd's actually? I didn't see. Fairly ambitious, good determination, no complaints. And then the other one was Reese Smith. Two star ability, three star potential, a really good versatile backup, just what we need. You can see he's played off the bench loads this season, can play off either wing, number 10 or up front. I mean, the players that are here are promising. Add to that that we know a director of football could come in and tie some of these down. Cole Capequa, absolute legend. We know how good he is. Kane Ferdinand, I think, wants to leave, so he's probably not going to be here. Charlie Adams, 30 years old. He's a good player. Spent most of his career in the National League. Emil Aqua, 24-year-old striker. Target man at six foot three would be good. Seiko Azare, an okay right back. Maybe not the best going forward, but defensively rock solid and quick too. Ashley Nathaniel George, a 30-year-old right winger, a solid backup. Sean McClowski, another one who I think wants to leave, but a decent pro. And then two goalkeepers as well. You've got a 20-year-old who's not great. And you've got a 17-year-old who's even worse. So maybe a goalkeeper's the priority. And I think that's the sort of jeopardy that comes with this. There's a real good core of players here. Even the three that are the spine of the team. If two or three of the others get tied down by a new director of football. And then he can add six or seven bits of quality. Add to that the couple of non-contract players there. And a couple of good youth players too. It really looks good on paper. I'm excited. I want a good director of football. That's what we're going to be setting the chairman to do. And this, I think, could be the big break for our career. A club in non-league that's not in the worst financial position. Its expectations, I think, are realistic. We can get the playoffs with the right signings. It's just about who comes in as director of football. So fingers crossed there will be some positives on that front. Our job now is to get through the summer. We will pick our tactic. I have no idea what to go for yet because, of course, we've only got five players tied down. We'll wait and see what the summer brings, but we've got a full pre-season with these lads. I mean, in truth, there's no real excuses unless we end up with no first 11. But overall, I'm really excited. I'm glad to be out of Peterborough Sports. All of that suffering at Airbus and in our last club, I think will be worth it now. Let me know what you think of the players that are here. Let me know what you think of the move and the fact that we got offered the job so quickly, which has to be a good sign. Do you think we're going to be a success? Are you as optimistic as me that this could be left off? And please, if one thing this chairman does... Get me Russ Wilcox because I would trust him with a rebuild. Let's see what happens though. It's only happened a few times in our head coach history. If you're looking forward to finding out as we'll return for the first day of the National League South season and a big summer transfer special I hope, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM23 content from two long-term stories. We've got a big surprise episode in our Build a Nation tomorrow so make sure you're up to date with that playlist and come and join our Twitch streams every day up in the eye above. There's also links to other playlists, including the top three, where I told you you should be managing Oldham this year. But we're not doing that. We're at Maidenhead. And I'll see you in a couple of days' time to find out what we've got to work with.